you have to go along with us, or you're providing quiet impetus to shooters. Why are you such a pussy, Ben Shapiro? Just say the policy. Maybe they're not proposing policy now, which I also don't think is true, but then look at policy that they've proposed in the past. Go to what they've said on the campaign trail in the past. Look at their websites and see if they have it in the issues tab, and then talk about those things. But if we're just gonna use this entire video, we're seven minutes in now and you haven't talked about literally any policies. You vaguely brought up a couple, but also didn't talk about why they would be bad. Like, what is this video? So here we have, once again, the absolute peak of conservative intelligentsia. Ben Shapiro talking about why we need to stop politicizing mass shootings. Now, I am of the opinion that the right wing has actually been engaging in a lot of politicization of this mass shooting. I just put out a video recently about Candace Owens and how she decided to weaponize trans people and go on a deranged tweet storm after the Uvalde shooting that claimed the lives of 19 elementary school children and two or three teachers or adults. She went on to put out a single tweet about, oh my God, thoughts and prayers. And then was like, oh, but it's absolutely sick that these people would, you know, make it political or whatever, paraphrasing. And then she goes on to tweet in the most deranged capacity about how so-called gender nonconformity and being trans is a mental illness. And she linked that to the shooter somehow through unsubstantiated rumors. This is not new. In fact, to react in the way that most conservatives react to school shootings, which is to do nothing, is literally also a political act. Political acts aren't just things you do. You can also engage in politics by not doing anything. Specifically by not doing anything about a problem that we can see is seemingly localized just to this country. There are a variety of things you could try to do to achieve the desired outcome, in my opinion, of making it so that tragedies like these never happen again, or at the very least happen so infrequently to be incredibly rare like other countries. But no, we live in the United States of America when there are more guns than our people, and therefore, because of a variety of other influences that make conservatives the way that they are, this is just the reality that we live in. To not do anything in the face of that is also a political action. Anyway, so here you have Ben Shapiro deciding to tell us why we need to stop politicizing mass shootings. Maybe he's going to be self-aware here. He says we. You know, it's probably the royal we. But he says we. Maybe, you know, he's turned over a new leaf. He's done some introspection and found out, oh, well, I, Ben Shapiro, have politicized mass shootings many times before, and I'm going to come clean and talk about that and show you my new thoughts on the subject, the new lens, the new perspective that I maybe will find out. I will not hold my breath, though. When you hear people talk about gun control in the way that they do, you have to understand that it seems to have nothing to do with actually preventing bad things from happening and everything to do with castigating their political opposition as evil. Well, it depends on how you define gun control. So like, if my political opposition is mass shooters, and in this case, considering Uvalde, the mass shooters of elementary schools, uh, then yes, I would like to castigate them. I think that's a good thing, actually. Now, that being said, the inaction by the Republican Party and conservatives in this country to literally do anything at all, make any proposals that might actually do some amount of good, to not do anything, or even to make it easier for people to obtain guns, like has happened in Texas recently, seems to be doing the opposite of what you would want to do in order to stop elementary school children and everyday people in public from being killed at the hands of somebody with whatever firearm they decide to use. But maybe we'll get some political prescriptions here. Maybe Ben Shapiro will propose something. So for example, yesterday, again, it's the same routine over and over. Uh -huh. We're not even going to specify what policy we want, but we're just going to tell you there's a policy that solves all of this. And if Who's you oppose this? us, it's because you oppose that policy and because you're either corrupt and in the pay of the gun lobby or something. By the way, when, when Joe Biden talks about- Wait, so are you going to cite any examples of this happening or is this just a thing that you've invented? I would like to see uh, some sources, maybe some context to the people that are doing that. I will say that a lot of the ways that liberals talk about gun control in this country or methods to make it so that mass shootings happen less uh, are pretty bad. They seem relatively ineffective. So for one thing, banning the AR-15 or assault weapons in general doesn't seem to be the best solution. It's more of like a band-aid on a gangrenous festering wound because if they can't get the AR-15, well, then they're going and get another you know, assault weapon. If they can't get either of those, well, they'll just use handguns. You know, I, I believe it was Virginia Tech. It was a very deadly mass shooting in a school and they used pistols. 
So banning a specific kind of gun just seems like a waste of time. If you could rather, you know, strengthen the background checks that people should have to go to, maybe federally mandate that every single gun seller, every single gun distributor has to do a comprehensive background check that has oversight from the federal government. You would want to look for a variety of red flags like domestic abuse. Uh, I believe it's 60% um, of, of mass shooters have had a history of domestic violence. I think that making it harder for people with the history of hurting others to have access to firearms is probably a good way given that data to stop them from doing that so it is true that the democratic party and the liberals within it don't really propose the best solutions however they're trying at least whereas conservatives are either doing nothing or pushing policies that make the problem worse like making it easier for people to access firearms, especially those that through an actual good comprehensive background check, they might not be able to have access to them. Understand the, the, the so-called gun lobby in the United States has never been as weak as it is currently in the United States. And yet here you are. Now, I don't know if Ben Shapiro's got funding from the NRA specifically or any gun related lobbyists, but there are a lot of conservative politicians in the Republican Party that do. I mean, we don't see any quid pro quo necessarily, but I, I don't think it's really that far of a hop, skip and a jump that at that amount of money that they get might influence the way that they think about gun regulation, which would then hurt sales of, you know, gun manufacturers and distributors. Maybe. I don't know. And the NRA used to be an extraordinarily powerful political force in the United States. It is not anymore. But the NRA has been uh, suffering. Regardless of the validity of this statement, it still helps a lot of candidates get into power. So I, I don't know that I care that it's weak. I feel like I'd rather see it not exist, to be honest with you. And that's not to say that the NRA shouldn't exist. I do believe that, though. It seems like it's done more harm than good. But also, the influence that organizations like the NRA have shouldn't exist. You shouldn't be able to dump a whole lot of money into the campaign coffers of a politician and then have them be more amicable to your business interests. I think that's a weird conflict of interest that just shouldn't happen regardless of industry. Pharmaceuticals, health insurance, the gun lobby, you know, whatever else. I, I publicly funded elections seems like it would be helpful in at least making our politicians, which Ben and I both agree are pretty dog shit, to make them a little bit more honest and having to actually work for their constituency. Uh, there's a variety of methods you could do this as well, but anyway. Like hit after hit because of internal corruption and serious management problems in the NRA. There are some other gun groups out there, but they don't have anything like serious political sway. The reality is that the gun lobby in the United States is gun owners in the United States, which is 100 million people in the United States. People- Do you think so? Does anybody have the stats? I wonder if there have been surveys to gun owners about the issue. I know that it's overwhelmingly supported in Americans in general of those surveyed that they support a variety of measures to try to, you know, stamp out this gun problem. Does anybody have that? There's a, a helpful graphic that's floating around. Ah, here we go. Let's see. From the liberal communist ABC News. Let's see. This is a ABC News Washington Post poll from September 2019. Where Americans stand on gun control measures. 89% support requiring universal background checks. 86% support red flag laws. 60% support banning high capacity magazines. This doesn't really mean anything. You could just have several lower capacity magazines already loaded and just reload. The idea is that, oh, well, if they're reloading, then they can't be shooting. So they're going to have a little bit of time for maybe somebody to come in and neutralize the target. But... It seems like banning assault weapons. It seems like another band-aid that doesn't really do a whole lot. 56% support banning assault weapons sales and 52% support mandatory assault weapon buyback programs. That's pretty good, in my opinion. In Australia, which is obviously a different context, I believe Australia has had a good amount of success with their gun buyback program. The idea is that guns are expensive for a lot of people, especially depending on your economic status. And if you've spent like hundreds of thousands of dollars on the firearm itself, the equipment necessary to go along with it, the ammunition, and whatever fees related to your use of a range or whatever other things that you have, classes you might take, yada, 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 that amount of investment makes it really difficult for you to want to just give the gun away to the government or have the government, you know, come and take it, brother. So giving people the option to be reimbursed for that purchase, it might make them more likely to be like, okay, well, maybe I don't need this firearm so I can get some money from the government and get it to them, which for the government then gets it off the streets and yada, yada, yada. It seems like there's, you know, some worth there to that idea. What is this? Gallup.com. The liberal Gallup polls, man. Guns. Bruh. This is some data mail bullshit. I'm looking at data when watching a Ben Shapiro video. I've already put in more effort than Ben Shapiro has in this, and I've only been doing this for like the last 10 minutes. In general, do you feel the laws covering the sale of firearms should be made more strict, less strict, or kept as they are now? So more strict? 
52%. Kept is now 35. Less strict, 11. Huh. This is from a Gallup poll. Interesting. You have a gun in your home. Huh. More people don't have a gun. Imagine that. Seems like a minority of people in this country own firearms. Despite, they end up, you know, going on, commit mass shootings sometimes, which is pretty cringe in my opinion. There's a variety of other shit here, but my brain is way too small to look at all this shit right now. God damn it. People who believe in the Second Amendment. In other words, it's a popular movement in the United States for people who are law-abiding to be able to own guns. And nobody who's law-abiding wants somebody who's not law-abiding to own guns. I, I know there's this weird idea out there that somehow if you're a gun owner or you're pro-gun ownership, that somehow this means you want bad people to have guns. No. I'm just assuming that bad people will find a way to get guns, and I'd like to have one to protect myself. Sure, but why wouldn't you then support methods for, at the bare minimum, making it a little bit harder for those bad people to get the guns? Like, sure, they might go through back alley channels in order to get a firearm, but that's certainly going to be harder than going to their local gun shop and buying one with very little, you know, pushback or research into them through a background check, which I don't know that Ben Shapiro supports. 66% of gun owners own multiple guns. There might be more guns than people, but a minority of people that own them. Yeah, exactly. And that's because, you know, guns are cool. <laughs> people just end up wanting to buy them. It's like tattoos. Guns are like tattoos, okay? You get one, you're eventually going to get more. That just seems to be the way it works. <laughs> and confiscating my gun isn't going to make school children any, any safer in any logical way at all. It makes school kids less safe because I'm a person on hand who can presumably grab my gun and try and go do something about it. Does that happen, though? Does, does that ever does that ever happen? So first of all, Ben Shapiro is not going to do that. I don't think he has it in him. I don't think he's got the stones to do that. I mean, if the fucking police officers at Uvalde didn't have the stones while they're kitted up to go and stop an, what, 18 year old from committing that, you know, that tragedy. No shot, Ben Shapiro. You're just telling me Ben Shapiro's braver than a police officer? I don't think he would say he is. There's no one on earth who, if there were a way of snapping your fingers and magically every bad person couldn't have a gun, wouldn't snap their fingers. So, so what's interesting about that is that obviously if we're going to go to absurd hypotheticals like waving a magic wand, then obviously, no, we can't just remove all of the guns from the country. We can't just close Pandora's box. You know, the cat's out of the bag, like I've said before, and I wouldn't want to do that either. I am a fan of and I support and advocate for responsible firearm ownership. It's not that people want to snap their fingers and immediately make it so that every bad person can't get a gun. It's just that because we can't do that, because we're not magical, because we don't have, you know, magic fairy dust to sprinkle on top of the gun manufacturers in this country to like magically stop bad people. As soon as they walk into the gun shop, they burst into flames and, you know, fall to ash because we just know they're bad and they're going to do bad with it. No, we put in place policy where we can look at these people, do a background check, see if they have a history that might make them more likely likely to do bad with the gun, and then you might still have some people fall through the cracks even with a very rigid and strict system, but you end up having a higher percentage chance of preventing tragedies like what happened to Uvalde from happening. If you oppose even that idea, which most people in America seem to support, then you're kind of not really helping the problem and you're allowing for the conditions as they are currently to continue to fester, which allows a higher percentage chance for mass shootings to happen. So unfortunately, if you actually care about the deaths of innocent people at the hands of mass shooters, you can't be Ben Shapiro anymore. Did the Uvalde shooter have a history of domestic violence? I'm not sure, but 60% of mass shooters as they exist currently have had a history of domestic violence. And as such, if you check for that in a background check, you would want to try to find those people so that that 60% percentage could you know, start going down as the rates of mass shootings start going down. Ideally. Obviously, like I said before, some people will slip through. It's not perfect, and because we live in a country that has these rights for people to own firearms, it's going to be difficult to actually have a 100% concrete, best possible solution, but the things that I'm offering actually could help a little bit more than the things that the right is offering, which is nothing. Except thoughts and prayers and, you know, vague gestures at mental health, even though they don't care about mental illness at all. That policy does not exist, and yet the suggestion of the left is that it does exist. Somehow, magically. So, for example, Kamala Harris, the vice president of the United States, is sort not a big fan of Kamala Harris. I, not many people are. <laughs> He's a fairly unpopular politician currently. Odd, because yesterday she actually spoke before the president of the United States on this, which is sort of a breach of protocol. Here is Vice President Harris, who responded immediately by, again, suggesting that we just have to have the quote unquote courage to take action. And this is the common line is that it's just a question of willpower. We have the solutions. It's just the well, no, you're going to have to name the solutions and then we're going to have to discuss them. They don't want to talk about that. They want to talk about it. it's the willpower. Well, I've talked about it. So if you weren't a pussy, Ben Shapiro, you wouldn't cherry pick the people 
that you want to look at and the comments that they've made. I'm not in the business of defending Kamala Harris, but if anybody in the chat wants to look at any policies that Kamala Harris has proposed and provide me the links for that, I'd be interested. But let's see what she says. Here is uh, Kamala Harris. As a nation, we have to have the courage to take action and understand the nexus between what makes for reasonable- God, she's so uncharismatic. How did she get into politics? That's my question. And sensible public policy to ensure something like this never happens again. I'm sure that's all that she had to say. I would not put it past conservatives to uncharitably clip people and the things that they say, because they do that a lot. Okay, did she suggest what that public policy would, would look like? Or I did. What would stop all this? Of course she doesn't. So at least it's that. out there. And we all know what it is. Really? Then, it, then articulate it. Well, to be fair, it is out there. And a lot of people do kind of know what it is, considering that there is a high percentage of the American population that do support stricter background checks, red flag laws, even like bans on assault weapons and high capacity magazines, which I don't necessarily agree with, but they also do support those. So theoretically, the policies are out there. And some amount of people know them. But I do think it's a bad thing that a politician would not bring them up. But I, I don't care about Kamala Harris. She's the vice president, so I kind of have to. But I'm the streamer here. Just really articulated. Then we can have an open conversation about what that policy looks like. Are we talking about stronger ERPOs? How, do, how are those enforced? Are we talking about different background checks? How is that made different? What, what are we talking about here? Because you, you never hear them actually specify the hard policy. Because the minute that they do, it becomes absolutely clear it wouldn't stop a shooting like this. So here's, here's my question. What are the policies that are provided by people like Ben Shapiro? Because so far, and I mean, we're three minutes into the video, but so far, all we've got is that, you know, a good guy with a gun was the, it was like alluded to as maybe a solution because Ben Shapiro in, you know, this fantasy land that he has in his head, he might be able to get his gun and then go stop a mass shooter, which, you know, I would not expect that to happen from him. I'm sorry. From the man who went to Home Depot to buy a single plank of wood and put it in a bag. <laughs> I just don't think he has it in him. Frankly, I don't know if I have it in me either. That shit's fucked up, which is why, theoretically, police should be the ones handling that, but it seems like they're not the best at doing that either. It seems like we have to address the gun issue first, rather than trying to find solutions that end up just being symptoms of the broader problem, which is ease of access to firearms from people that should not have them. The same thing from Barack Obama, who is fond of, of drawing this stark moral contrast between himself, he, he was the great light bringer, of course, and all of his political opponents who are on the side of darkness and evil for not simply acquiescing to all of his political prescriptions. We're Here's talking about Obama. Barack Obama's statement yesterday, quote, across the country, parents are putting their children to bed, reading stories, singing lullabies, and in the back of their minds, they're worried about what might happen tomorrow after they drop their kids off at school. Oh, you can't even use, you can't even do a fake Barack Obama accent when reading this for some entertainment value. Uh, let me be clear, uh, across the country, uh, parents are putting their children to bed, reading stories. <laughs> or take them to a grocery store or any other- <laughs> My Obama space. is very bad. Michelle and I grieve with the families in Uvalde- At least I'm for trying. experiencing pain no one should have to bear. This is the standard take from the right wing, by the way. This is the only take outside of more cops, more funding for cops and good guys with guns. Nearly 10 years after Sandy Hook and 10 days after Buffalo, our country is paralyzed, not by fear, but by a gun lobby and a political party that have shown no willingness to act in any way that might help prevent these tragedies. There, make no mistake, what he is saying is that if you oppose his political prescriptions, which, he, which go unnamed in this thread, it's because you are an evil human being. So, so has he run on prescriptions for gun control in the past? Has he talked about them outside of this event previous to it? Perhaps we could go back into the annals of history and find out the proposals that then Barack Obama had and kind of infer what he means by that instead of just saying like, oh, well, the literal words were not in these chosen tweets, so therefore they don't want to name them because whatever their motivation is. What is this? Oh, okay. This is a, so. This is an older one, anyway. This is for the Kamal Harris thing. This is from October second, twenty nineteen. So from some time ago. This is before the election, obviously. Kamala Harris at the uh, gun safety forum in Las Vegas. Harris reiterated support for the mandatory buyback of assault weapons, joining Beto O'Rourke and fellow Senator Cory Booker in backing the approach from the forum stage. Quote, we have to have a buyback program, and I support a mandatory gun buyback program. It's got to be smart. We got to do it the right way. But there are 5 million assault weapons at least. Some estimate as many as 10 million. And we're going to have to have smart public policy. That's about taking those off the streets, but doing it in the right way. And theoretically, you know, a gun buyback program, it's been effective in other countries. And it's a better way to get guns off the streets than just yoinking them out of people's hands, because that's a difficult thing to do in this country. 
And, you know, people spend a lot of money on their guns. If they're willing to give them away, they should get a bit of a kickback for it. So Combat Gun Suicide Sarah said she would prevent those who, accord said, should not have a gun from obtaining a firearm through expanded background checks. Oh, well, that seems interesting. She added that she would also strengthen gun safety laws and increase access to mental health services, saying we need to do both. Huh. Well, it looks like she does have some policies. Now, if she's actually, you know, doing anything about these policies or even can do anything about these policies as the vice president, given the makeup of the Congress, it's not necessarily that easy, but she's talked about them in the past. So it seems like while she may not have said it immediately then, she has said the shit in the past. So if Ben Shapiro wanted to dunk on her, he could do that, you know, small amount of research required to find these statements and then pick apart those arguments if you wanted to. But instead, we could just vaguely gesture at the left not having any policy prescriptions and just saying, oh, well, something's got to be done, which ironically is literally also the Republican position. You're a bad human being. You're in league with shooters. You're somebody who wants dead kids if you don't agree with Barack Obama. He says it's long past time for action, any kind of action. And it's another tragedy and a quieter, but no less tragic one for families to wait an uh, another day. So I have a question that that this one phrase is so telling. It's long past time for action, any kind of action. Uh huh. That is not a recipe for public policy. That is, that, that is a... Oh, God. <sighs> We've got some executive actions on gun control. Interesting. NCSL.org directs the ATF to require any business and engage in the sale of guns to obtain a federal license to do so and conduct background checks. Requirement applies to gun stores, sellers of guns at gun shows, and sellers of guns over the internet. So these are all executive actions, by the way, which can be undone. You would have to look, but I would imagine Trump might have undone some of these. Require the ATF Bureau to issue a rule requiring background checks for purchases of certain dangerous firearms and other items who purchase them through a trust, corporation, or other legal entity. Encourages greater communication between federal and state authorities on criminal history information. Instructs the FBI to overhaul the background check system to make it more efficient and accurate. Calls for increased funding to the ATF for the hiring of 200 new ATF agents and investigators to help enforce existing gun laws. Ask the Attorney General to confirm federal U.S. attorneys to work with state and local authorities and groups to increase prevention of domestic violence and to prevent prohibited persons from taking firearms. This is very interesting. Like I said, 60% of mass shooters have a history of domestic violence. The fact that Barack Obama took executive action to try to address that, at least we're trying, Pros is a $500 million investment to increase access to mental health care by increasing service capacity in the behavioral health workforce. So obviously the right wing will constantly harp on, oh, it's a mental health issue, it's a mental health issue, it's not the guns, guns don't kill people, people kill people. But then they go on to never advocate or push policies or vote against policies that would actually expand mental health care in this country. Kind of looks like you don't actually care about mental health. You just want to make sure that the guns stay out there for whatever reason. Uh, there's a fair amount of shit going on here, I would say. But uh, if we want to just look at tweets, if that's the only place you get your news, Ben Shapiro, then that's, uh, you're going to get a weird view of the world. Hey, that is an emotional appeal to bad public policy. Like what? You can't make public policy on any issue like this. Wait, so what's it's the bad policy? Past time for action. Any kind, really, any kind of action? Like if I run into a brick wall, was that an action? Like what exactly is yes, the Yes, that's what he means. He means that you should run into a brick wall with a fully erect penis so that it ruptures on impact. That's what Obama meant. That's what Obama said. Obama, he said it. I heard him say, he was like, oh, let me be clear. I want you to uh, get erect and then uh, jump on a trampoline and land on your belly so that your penis snaps in two. That's what he said. I heard it. That's an action. It's true. Is the action that you are proposing cutting greenhouse gas emissions? Like what? It's time for any kind of action? Presumably not. Yeah, presumably I action as it pertains to the gun issue, Ben Shapiro. You're being purposefully dense for no reason. I can propose you five different things. Uh, you can be performatively dense and obtuse all you want, but it's not an argument. The Democrats have rejected because they don't think that it either it will work or that it is worth the cost. Wait, what? I can propose you five different types of action. The Democrats action. have rejected. The Gem because they don't Democrats think have that it either it will work or that it is worth the cost or whatever it is. Wait, so have you done that? Has he done that? It's all a maybe a, he'll it's get to all it. an attempt at moral suasion aimed directly at people who disagree with them on their policy prescriptions by calling them murderers. Chris Murphy did the same routine from the floor of the Senate yesterday. He got up and of course he he got all of the plaudits of the media for doing this. Here here we go. Find a path forward here. This is so boring. I hope we get to Ben Shapiro talking about how he think we can best address the issue of mass shootings, which seems to be an outlier in the world for the United States. If we're going to continue to just look at liberals on the timeline and the speeches that they're making, well then, yeah, it's not a whole lot going on here. Work with us to find a way to pass laws that make this less likely. It will not solve the problem of American violence by itself. But by doing something, we at least 
stop sending this quiet message of endorsement. So I would agree that in these speeches, these liberals should probably bring up a variety of policies that they think might be effective. Uh, I don't know why you wouldn't. It just seems like an effective leadership to me. I, I will not disagree with that. Killers whose brains are breaking, who see the highest levels of government doing nothing. That's okay, this is crazy. So so it's it's a quiet level of endorsement to not pass bad public policy. You think that shooters are sitting to around- To not pass bad public policy. So which which policy? I'm going, well, you know, if they had passed that gun control bill, that really would have been a signal that they're taking this thing seriously. Guess I won't kill those kids. Is that that's really what, what Chris Murphy- No, it means that it will make it less likely for the people that might be more predisposed to killing kids with a firearm to not have access to it. So then they have to go through some back alley channels to get it. And at that point, they have to put in a little bit more effort than making a legal purchase at a store. You stupid fuck. <laughs> This is the intellectual of the right wing, by the way. This is the conservative intellectual. He's the Harvard-educated smart guy. What the fuck is going on here, man? If you're a conservative and you're watching, this is your this is your guy. This is the smart one of all of you, the smartest one, perhaps. He knows that's not the case. What he's really saying is, if you don't do what I want you to do, it's because you're a bad person. And of course, you have to go to so, the- So does that hurt your feelings or something? Does that make you upset? Because as far as we can see, Democrats have been fairly unsuccessful at actually instituting policy to address what they see as the problems with the gun issue. So if they're saying this, like, are, are your feelings just hurt? Like, are you sad? Are you mad? Are you pissed? You might be confused, but I'm not really hearing any arguments. I don't know why we care about this. So every headline at the New York Times and Washington Post today is about gun control. So, for example, McConnell says he is, quote, horrified and heartbroken. This is the New York Times, the Washington Post. No, sorry. This is the New York Times, quote. McConnell says he is horrified. You can't get your uh, communist news publications in a line. And heartbroken. I know how it gives feels. no indication he is dropping his opposition to new gun laws. Well, hold up a second. Which gun law is being proposed? I don't know, Ben Shapiro. How about you tell Again, us? The idea here is that if you do not acquiesce to whatever we say, it doesn't matter what X Oh, my God. Is. Stop crying. I mean, literally saying this. It doesn't matter. Holy what this shit. empty vessel we're going to say is action is. You have to go along with us, or you're providing quiet impetus to shooters. Why are you such a pussy, Ben Shapiro? Just say the policy. Maybe they're not proposing policy now, which I also don't think is true, but then look at policy that they've proposed in the past. Go to what they've said on the campaign trail in the past. Look at their websites and see if they have it in the issues tab, and then talk about those things. But if we're just gonna use this entire video, we're seven minutes in now and you haven't talked about literally any policies. You vaguely brought up a couple, but also didn't talk about why they would be bad. Like, what is this video? Thank also, we still haven't gotten to the point of why we need to stop politicizing mass shootings. I'd like to see him substantiate that claim as well. We've kind of just been bitching about, you know, milk toast liberals in the government. The Washington Post, from Sandy Hook to Buffalo and Uvalde, 10 years of failure on gun control. Back to our original question. Why is it that when it's in Buffalo, New York, the issue is white supremacy, but not gun control? It happens in the New York subway system. It's not gun control and it's not white supremacy. So I guess it just disappears. When it happens. So. In Buffalo, the reason why the media was like, oh, it's white supremacy. It's white supremacy. Well, it's because in his manifesto, he said he was a white supremacist. He said he was a fan of the great replacement conspiracy theory. He talked about how white people were at threat because of all the people that weren't white coming into the country. And then he drove hours out of his way to a predominantly black neighborhood to get to a supermarket that had a lot of fucking black people in it and he killed them. But oh my God. The media, how could they possibly think that the shooter's own words would be enough to substantiate the motive being related to white supremacy? My brain, it's firing on every single cylinder. The neurons, they're fucking bumping and grinding like a fucking nightclub right now, trying to make all this happen in my mind, trying to figure out how it is that the shooter, whose manifesto directly cited a white supremacist conspiracy theory, might have been motivated to drive three hours out of his way to kill black people in a predominantly black neighborhood in which he didn't live. I'm sorry, I'm just the smartest person around, apparently. ...in California, and it's not a white supremacist attack, then we don't talk gun control, because California gets an A rating from Brady Center for gun control. When it happens in Texas, and it's not a white supremacist, we have to talk about Sandy Hook, Buffalo, Uvalde, then it's about gun control. And it's about failure on gun control. Okay, and again, the, the not quiet implication is you're bad. You're evil. So, so, that, Ryan so that makes you upset. You, you get sad about that because you don't actually propose any policies, at least you haven't in this video, which would have been a really good time to do it, that you think might make it less likely for elementary school children to get gunned down in school. You're mad that people are saying that your inaction might lead to those things. And you also oppose the action that is being proposed. So you're just sad or mad or upset. Like, I don't know. Reiner just says it straight up. Rob Reiner, the director and actor.
He tweeted out, the blood of every child that dies of gun violence in this country is on the hands of the Republican Party. And that's true. You want to know why? Because the Democratic Party, at the very least, is proposing solutions rather than vaguely gesturing at mental illness or whatever. Universal background checks are widely supported and seem to have statistical backing to be significantly impactful. These are opposed by Republicans. If we're not going to do anything and it's because of a certain political party, the Republican Party, then yes, the blood of those people of those children is on the Republicans hands. It's pretty logical to me. The blood of all those kids is on the hands of the Republican Party, which is quite amazing since there are a bunch of children who are dying in Chicago pretty much every weekend. Oh, in mass Chicago, must Chicago. Never let them bring up the fact that while Chicago does on paper have very strong gun control laws, the states around them don't. So they end up getting guns from the states around them. Now, one could assume that if those states around Illinois had stronger gun regulation, like the background checks I've been talking about, which are opposed by the Republicans in these states, maybe it might be harder for them to get those guns. If we instituted a gun buyback program, maybe more of those would get off the streets. The Dems have the majority? Not enough. Currently, the Democrats do not have a filibuster-proof majority in the Senate. You would have to increase the margins, unfortunately. And Rob Reiner does not seem to care because Chicago is completely Democrat-run. I am not suggesting that Lori Lightfoot is in favor of children getting shot. I don't think she's in favor of children getting shot. Except also, <laughs> your side of the fence is home to a certain very popular conspiracy theory that a lot of Congress people in the Republican Party seem to be subscribing to more and more that suggests that all Democrats are demons that eat children. So I, I, I don't know that you can necessarily claim the moral high ground on this one. She has bad public policy ideas, but I would never suggest that she's in favor of kids being murdered. I, 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 so he's just mad. He's literally triggered that because of the inaction of the party he supports and the ideology that he subscribes to, children are dying at the hands of mass shooters where we do have possible policy we could push, like I've mentioned several times throughout this video. He's just mad because of that inaction. It's continuing to happen. And people are pointing it out. He's a pussy. You know, you have to give Fred Gutenberg at least some level of, of flexibility here considering that he actually lost his daughter in a mass shooting. He's now become a spokesperson for gun control. His, his daughter was murdered at Parkland. But here he was basically saying that anyone who disagrees with him, we don't love our kids. If you're a Republican, you don't love your kids, which is, I mean. Well, that's statistically true. As far as I'm aware, if you look at the stats behind the rates of child abuse in this country, there seems to be a lean toward conservatism. If you look at the Catholic Church, for instance, which is a fairly conservative institution as well, as a very popular example, the rates of physical abuse and verbal abuse from conservative parents as well. I don't know if this is necessarily the, uh, the line of thought you want to follow. I heard you with Senator Murphy earlier. He has been heroic. He needs one of these Republicans. This can't be Democrats solving this. These Republicans need to actually love their children as well. And they need to walk into his office and they need to grab him by the arms and say, we're with you. Uh, Republicans apparently, they don't love their kids. So, Meanwhile, you have Steve Kerr, who's been- the, Holy allowed. fuck, this entire video has just been Ben Shapiro's feelings being hurt. Speak out about this public, is so public boring. policy again. So Steve Kerr, of course, was completely silent when it came to China and genocide against Uyghurs. Wrap but whenever it up. there is a gun control issue, he, he jumps to it. We'll Wrap also point out that it up. Steve Kerr, the coach of the, the Golden State Warriors, at the height of riots in Oakland, suggested that police officers ought to be removed from Oakland schools. And this is something that he actually said in 2020, but, but he, he also police officers in schools have not been shown to be effective, by the way. Parkland had a resource officer. They had a good guy with a gun. It was not effective. And viral for a rant that he delivered just before a playoff basketball game last night. And uh, and he went off. And, and again, this is not a call for actual measures that would prevent shootings like this. This is an emotional. Wait, so if it's the one I'm thinking, of, I think I've seen this. He says that there is a bill currently that's been on the table that Republicans have just not voted on about universal background checks of some kind. So maybe we'll get into policy now. Suggesting that everyone who is not on his side of the political aisle is a bad person. There's 50 senators right now who refuse to vote on H.R. 8, which Ooh. is a background check rule that We've got the some House passed a couple of years ago. It's been sitting there for two years. And there's a reason they won't vote on it, to hold on to power. So I ask you, Mitch McConnell, I ask all of you senators who refuse to do anything about the violence and school shootings and supermarket shootings, I ask you, are you going to put your own desire for power ahead of the lives of our children and our elderly and our churchgoers? Because that's what it looks like. 
Holy based. Well, all right. So, okay. We've got some emotional appeals. Far be it for people to get emotional over the fact that Republican inaction has allowed for this problem of mass shootings to fester, much less mass shootings of schools. But there was a policy talked about there. Now, I unfortunately don't know the absolute ins and outs of the specific bill that has been mentioned here, but perhaps Ben Shapiro will, and he will illuminate to us why it's bad policy. Let's find out. That's what it looks like. It looks like they're on his... So first of all, if you follow his logic through to his endpoint, he's saying that elected officials, their desire for power is leading them to allow school children to die. So first of all, what... Which seems to be true. Either the action by Republicans making it easier for people to access firearms, even those that through a background check might not have been able to access one and therefore not have been able to use them or have had a harder time getting a gun to begin with to then use, may have made it so that less mass shootings happen ideally, because we're at least trying something, or the inaction in that they don't want to vote yes on these bills, or they don't bring them to a vote, or they just offer thoughts and prayers and, you know, oh, video games is the problem, right? Let's see. Where does he think elected officials get their power? Typically, elected officials get their power from being elected. This is My why God, what a naive view of the world. How can you start the video saying, oh, well, you know, the NRA, it's been neutered. So like the, the political contributions, the campaign donations that the NRA makes to a variety of senators and Congress people that just so happen to be anti literally any legislation against guns that might make it so that people who seek to do harm with them have less likelihood of getting them and have to go through extra back channels in order to get them, which would make it harder for them to attain rather than just legally purchasing one. Well, that's not really a problem because the NRA has been neutered or whatever. And then you go on to say that elected politicians get their power from their constituency. It's a very naive view of the world that the politicians that we have are actually somehow being held to account by their constituency. Because you'd have to disagree with a lot of the things that Republicans and conservatives like Ben Shapiro like to talk about, which is so-called Democrat liberal propaganda. There are people out there that will vote for people without knowing much about them and oftentimes vote against their own best interests because they've been propagandized to. But the idea that politicians get their power from the constituency seems to contradict that. So you can't decry Democrats and liberals brainwashing people to vote for them and also say that the politicians get their power from the constituency when that's obviously not the case. You can look at actual legislation that's been passed and how it doesn't map on to what the fucking wants and needs of the constituencies are. Elected officials are elected, but Joe Brandon stole the election for sure. Oh yeah, brother, hell yeah. Joe Brandon and Hillary Clinton. You cannot forget Hillary Rodham Clinton. Hillary lied, people died. It's true, it's true, brother. Why would anyone disagree with a fair universal background check? Because it would make it so that gun manufacturers and gun sellers make less money. That's literally it. Elected officials. What he's really saying is that a vast majority of Americans don't support his policies, but he knows the solutions, and so we should just implement those solutions. Well, I'm all ears. I mean, if you look I'm at the ABC News poll that we looked at earlier, a large majority of Americans do actually support universal background checks and even policies that I don't think are necessarily the best, like a ban on assault weapons and high capacity magazines. Regardless, you know, don't let the feelings get in the way in your facts, Ben Shapiro. What are your solutions? What are yours? If you want to say full scale gun confiscation, say it out loud. Let's hear it. But, but that's not what it is, you stupid fuck. You can straw man people all you want, but that's not actually what it is. Maybe some stupid ass fucking liberals who don't understand the climate and context of this country as it pertains to the rest of the fucking world and how it's different might suggest like, oh, well, we just take all the guns away or whatever. No actual elected politician is saying that. So if we go to what the politicians are actually saying and the policies that they're actually proposing and have talked about on the campaign trail or have introduced to the Congress, maybe we could look at those policies and see why Ben Shapiro thinks they're bad but we haven't really brought any up. So this entire video, he's decrying, oh, the liberals, they're saying something needs to be done, but they're not actually proposing anything. And then the one clip he shows where not a politician, but an NBA coach or whatever has actually talked about a specific policy, a piece of legislation that has been sitting for two years, apparently. He's not even going to address it. He's not even going to bring it up. Nobody is advocating for full-scale gun confiscation. And if they are, they're very silly people. And it's a very fractional, you know, minority of people. Just do it. They won't do it because if they do it, then they know they will lose politically because they know that the American people are not going to go for that. And again, the data don't back up the idea. The data does back up the idea. I guess it depends on what you're looking at. If you're looking at a daily wire poll, then maybe. But it seems like, from the data that I've seen, universal background checks are pretty pretty well supported. And even some policies that I don't even think are the best are as well. At full-scale gun confiscation, or gun buybacks, or anything like... <laughs> How can you equivocate full-scale gun confiscation 
and gun buybacks. There is a distinct difference there. Full-scale gun confiscation is the forcible confiscation by the state of firearms from citizens, whereas gun buybacks are a voluntary process that a gun owner would go through in order to get money from the state and relinquish their firearm. Those are completely different things. Like, it, it takes literally zero intellectual capacity to understand that. And to conflate the two is very telling of the idea that Ben Shapiro, he's got nothing. AOC did the, the same routine. It's always the same routine. Oh, shit, AOC. it's AOC. We got to get AOC in here. I bet he's really mad that she's recently engaged to be married. I'm sure he's pissed, dude. Let's go. She tweeted, there is no such thing as being pro-life. While supporting laws that let children be shot in their schools, elders and grocery stores, worshipers in their houses of faith, survivors by abusers, or anyone in a crowded place. It's an idolatry of violence and it must end. Based and epic. Now that, while it's not a direct advocacy for any policy, you might be able to find other tweets where AOC has actually gone into the policy that she supports. I don't know if we'll do that here. I, just, I, I, I have a question. I, 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 Supporting laws that let children be shot. I, I was unaware I, 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 that murder I, I, became I, I, legal I, I, in the United States. I was unaware that murder became legal. <laughs> this is the intellectual. Like, there is not enough straw in the fucking world to construct the kingdom of straw men that Ben Shapiro has tried to erect this entire fucking video. When, when did that happen? Laws that let people be shot? Ooh, what does that mean? Explain. Ooh, explain that, please. She can't explain. Yeah, you Am can't I... explain. The inaction of people to actually try any fucking policy, regardless of the efficacy of it, as I've said ad nauseum in this entire fucking video, or the actions taken by Republicans to make the problem worse by making firearms easy to access, making it harder for these background checks to happen at the behest, ostensibly, apparently, allegedly, of the gun lobby, you know, which has been so thoroughly routed. You're owning yourself when you suggest that you can't be pro-life and support this sort of stuff. So you're using this stuff to defend abortion? That, that, that's your move? Your move is to defend abortion on the basis of this? Strange political move. We're <laughs> Bro, what are we talking about? What is going on here? How is this the man that has somehow been able to swindle 4.59 million people on YouTube? You might do better making men out of wool than straw. You seem to have a lot of it for the amount that you've pulled over the eyes of your viewership. Jesus Christ. I think we all learned during the COVID debacle that letting the most framed among us dictate policy is a terrible idea. You know what's really funny about this? Is that if you look at the policy that was instituted by a variety of countries that aren't the United States of America, that you would say are acting more fearfully than the people in the United States, well, those countries have less of a COVID problem, actually. They've had less people die. Crazy. You know. Funny. Really. The problem is that every time there's a problem, we expect the government to solve. The absolute worst institution at solving anything ever. The answer is in the community at zero feet, not the feral grommet federal government. I mean, this is a meme, I don't know. At 30,000 feet. So, but are you going to advocate for any specific policy? You're doing the thing that Ben Shapiro said was bad here, man. You might get spanked. Though maybe that's what you're looking for. Instead of sending billions to Ukraine for guns, how about school security? Trump said this recently. The funny thing about that is, is that there have been schools that have had very beefy security, and yet they've still been subject to mass shooting. It's almost like trying to blame any measure of attempts to fix the problem rather than addressing the root of the problem, which is firearms getting into the hands of people that would seek to do harm easier, isn't actually going to net you any benefit. When I saw another massive shooting, the first thing that came to my mind was, quote, here comes these politicians about to make a tragic moment into politics. What? But why are you telling on yourself? How is it that you hear that 19 elementary school children have been killed at school and your first thought is, oh, well, how are the liberals going to react to this? How are the liberals? Well, oh my God, I can't wait to see the takes that the liberals are going to have so I can dunk on them. I feel like that's more telling of your psyche than the so-called politicians about to make a tragic moment into politics. Wait, what? <laughs> wait, I'm sorry. Wait, I've seen these. This is very important. Well, I'm seeing duplicate comments. Wait, Stephanie Bria, two days ago. I've said this for years. Their name shouldn't be revealed because it causes them to feel a sense of immortality. It should be handled in such a way that it allows for the least amount of personal exposure possible. Beware Wolf, two days ago. I've said this for years. Their name shouldn't even be revealed because it causes them to feel a sense of immortality. It should be handled in such a way that it allows for the least amount of personal exposure possible. From Kama, two days ago. I am a naturalized American citizen. I am from Mexico, where you can't have a gun, the criminals rule. As a new American citizen, I cherish my right to have a gun to protect myself. Stephanie Bria, two days ago. I am a naturalized American citizen. I am from Mexico, where you can't have a gun, the criminals rule. As a new American citizen, I cherish my right to have a gun to- Wow, wow, no way. Bots in the comments of a Ben Shapiro post? That's crazy. No shot, man. Maybe the reason why Ben Shapiro likes straw men so much is that they make up a lot of his audience apparently. Huh. That's interesting. 
So there's that. Wait, what does it say for this one? Huh, nothing. Okay. Interesting. Holy shit, there's one in the chat too. <laughs> well, my comment section, the bots that do happen to come through are usually like posting bit.ly links, and I don't know what the fuck they're for, because I'm not clicking that shit. So I just, you know, those get caught, and then I fucking report them, so. Anyway. Well, that was fun. I don't know. Cut the segment. High progressive. <laughs> Well, oh, it's Lil Masha. Thanks so much for the support. Hope you continue to enjoy the videos. If you would like to be the next Connor comment, well, all you gotta do, follow me on Twitter. At ConnorCC. Retweet my video links when they go live every single goddamn time. Very simple. Member to subscribe to the channel. Put all notifications on when you hit the bell. Appreciate that as well. Make sure you're nimbus the video. Hit the like button. Leave a spicy comment about the fact that Ben Shapiro is a stinky butthead or whatever. And have a fantastic rest of your day.